you hear Kevin Harlan, you know you're listening to a big game. And when you hear Kevin Harlan right here on the Sports Bash, you know I'm juiced up. Kevin, welcome back, man. How you been? We're to the broadcast tonight. Do we have Kevin? Can I hear Kevin? Uh, How about that? I got you. Can you hear me now? I got you now. I got you. How are you? <laughs> like in a uh, cell phone commercial. Uh, thank you for the kind words, and I'm anxious to see the Eagles tonight, see if they can get the two wins. They've had some recent success against the Cowboys. I would tell you, though, that this Dallas team, as I'm sure you've uh, talked about on your show, um, with Prescott, they're just a different team, and they've got maybe the best core of young receivers in pro football, and their offensive numbers reflect that. So the, uh, the Eagle defense will be challenged significantly, I think, tonight. Yeah, the whole Prescott uh, coming back, I mean, obviously people were uh, wondering what they were going to get from him. This guy didn't play the last 11 weeks, then he didn't play in preseason, and he came out firing, and he's got a ton of weapons here. So uh, obviously offensively they're very good, but did they improve enough defensively in your mind when you've uh, prepared for this game what stands out about that side of the ball? Because I think we all acknowledge they're very good offensively, but where are they defensively? Well, they got a couple guys um, added to this team. Micah Parsons, Penn State, you're familiar with him clearly. Uh, he's been terrific so far. He had like eight, nine quarterback pressures on the Chargers. Uh, Justin Herbert's last week in Los Angeles. Uh, we saw Dallas week one in Tampa on the season opening Thursday game um, against the champion Buccaneers. Um, he did not look lost. If you watch the, the HBO um, Hard Knock series, you could see that just the way the coaches and the veterans saw the kid and his personality and kind of a big-time program that he came from, certainly, you know, that, that makes him a very unique player. He's not, like, big, physical, strong, but he is fast and has – you know, the, the coverage instincts of a safety, and he's got the, the aggressiveness of a defensive lineman, but probably the great in-between game of a, of a linebacker. So I think trying to, to figure out where he belongs and how best to use him will be Dan Quinn's charge this season. Quinn is the new defensive coordinator from the Cowboys. He just came from Atlanta where they had bad defense. So yeah. I don't know how this league works sometimes, but uh, I, I do think that, that Quinn gives them – a a different feel defensively, and, and I think that they're going to uh, they're, they're going to push every button they can to get uh, some kind of some kind of feel and success on on that side of the ball because clearly on the offensive side uh, they've got a lot of answers there. They sure do, um, and uh, obviously a lot of it is Dak Prescott being back. But you know they've got weapons too. Lamb and it looks like Cooper's going to play. Cooper has carved up the Eagles since the trade. Elliott and how they use uh, Pollard should be interesting tonight as well. You're, it'll be they, didn't, they only scored twenty last week on the road uh, in LA against a good Chargers team. So it'll be interesting to see who they kind of lean on tonight. Yeah, it will be. I I think that Dak, you know, when he was going through this stuff. In the preseason, I know a great concern for the Cowboys when uh, he hurt his shoulder early in camp, and as you just said a second ago, you know didn't play in preseason. There, there was a great concern that the combination of him coming back with the with the completely reconstructed ankle and just the mental side of that rehab and how it would play as he plants his feet when it would get messy in the pocket and bodies are on the ground and he's trying to, you know, jump over guys to get his footing and shoot the ball down downfield. If he were thinking of that and trying to do too much with his arm, then that probably was one of the things that, that caused the issue. On the reverse side, if the arm isn't there, he might try to overcompensate by using other parts of his body or things that aren't natural. And now he really has screwed up his arm and the leg is not, you know, kind of checked that box in his mind about being football worthy. So there are some pretty important things here at play. They did consult with the New York Yankees and the Texas Rangers of major league baseball, uh, because clearly in, in baseball history, if a pitcher's having arm issues, they may overcompensate by throwing differently, using different parts of the body. They shouldn't. Um, or if they've got a leg injury, now they do more with their arm and, and stress that out. Like So there's all this at play when they're trying to figure out where Prescott is 
with his arm. Now, clearly, they wanted him to play this summer. It didn't work out, but I got to tell you, I, like I said, I saw him in Tampa week one. Uh, it looked like he had not missed a snap. Nope. He looked pretty darn good. Kevin Harlan uh, will call the action tonight, Eagles and Cowboys. Now, what's the vibe around this Eagles? Much different, I'm sure, than the team last year, which is that was – Kevin, I got to be honest, I know it was a weird season with COVID and the way you guys called games and the access that you got, but it was a painful season to watch outside of the fact there was no fans and the interaction was bad. That team was just not fun. Do you feel that there is a different vibe with this young team? But it's got it's a weird mix. It's got real young skilled players, but a veteran offensive line who now lost uh, two players already, the same problems they had last year. What's the vibe around Philly coming into tonight? I think it really centers around Hurts and just what that quarterback is going to look like. You know, is this really what they're banking on? I mean, is this the guy? Or do they feel like, you know, we may be in the midst of a four, five, six-win season, which is going to get us good draft position. Let's uh, let's begin to set our eyes on what the college quarterback, you know, class looks like. And as we know, that's no better than 50-50, right? I mean, and, and if you're expecting a rookie quarterback to come in, as you saw yesterday, most recently with Mac Jones, who looked terrific in the first two games, and then threw, what, three picks yesterday, um, you know, I, I just I don't know if it really you can sense where a team's going unless they have, you know, basically said, this is our quarterback, this is who we're riding with, he is our future. And, and I don't know, you know, nationally, I don't know if it's, if, it, if the message is not maybe clear, maybe it's clear in Philadelphia and where you are, but I think nationally it's not clear. Right. Is, is Hurts the guy or is he just kind of the guy right now? And, and, and I think that probably is the beginning of the conversation. It's like a lot of young players in this league, Kevin, right? It's on the job training. And if you can uh, produce while you're training, you're the guy. And if you can't produce while you're training, you might not be the guy. It's an odd dynamic in the NFL. It is. And, and listen, he's a winner. He was a winner at Alabama. But then Saban chose Tua, and he was a winner at Oklahoma, as we saw, and went to a completely different system, basically used his, his God-given skills and his running and all the different things he had picked up, you know, in the years at Alabama, and made Oklahoma the team they were a season ago. So, listen, or two years ago. So we know that he is a talented, winning quarterback. But do you make your whole offense around his skill set or do you make his uh, skill set and develop it and make it more of a traditional NFL offense? And I don't know. You know, we've had the Cam Newtons. We've got Lamar Jackson. And, and I don't know that the league still has settled on if a particular running style of quarterback can win in this league. Now, Lamar Jackson won, you know, all the games he won last year. And he was the MVP the year before. And, you know, he's proven, and we just saw what he did on, on, Saturday, on Sunday night against Kansas City with that win. Uh, and then we saw them leak out one yesterday in Detroit. So I, I, don't, I just don't know if, if an organization feels like we're going with the running quarterback who predominantly runs, not that Hurts can't throw or that Jackson can't throw. Mm-hmm. But that is their, that's kind of their calling card. Is that the way, is it the best way to get to the championship level again? Or do you say, you know, we need to develop an offensive line, uh, the skill guys, the, all the different parts of the team, and, and wait until that quarterback falls in our lap. And until he does, we're, we're as good with Hurts as we are maybe with, with, a, with a journeyman quarterback, right? I mean, like, or, or maybe Hurts now develops and is, is a chameleon-like, and he went from one system in Alabama to another system in Oklahoma. Now he's in a third system in the NFL. Maybe we sit and we wait for him to – you know, get a chance to really put, you know, sink his teeth into an NFL offense and, 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 and work with Sirianni, who has had, you know, success and experience working with offenses. I mean, these are all things that I'm sure are daily conversations in that organization, but in that personnel department, say, is this the guy? Listen, if they win tonight in Dallas and he beats Dak Prescott, who's the perfect blend, I think, of passing and running. He runs when he needs to and he's good at it but he wants to stay in the pocket and, and, and can throw off platform, and I get all that. But, but he clearly, I think he even feels, I'm better when I stand tall in the pocket, may take a hit, but, but give the routes a chance to mature. 
And I think that we just don't know that much on Hertz yet. We just, we just don't. The body work is too limited. Who knows, though, right? I mean, you, you, you just don't know sometimes what these guys can do. Yeah, it's, uh, we're watching it unfold before our eyes. Now, Kevin Harlan right. will call the action tonight, Westwood One Radio on the national call. Um, Eagles-Dallas, is it something? Is it just manufactured in this region, Dallas week, Dallas fans, the Eagles hate Dallas? Is that the same feeling when you get prepared for this game? Do you feel that? Because most people feel that the Dallas fans don't care much about the Eagles, that it's all one-sided. When you do an Eagles-Cowboys game, does it feel different like, you know, when you do a, you know, a Bears and Green Bay game or one of the other rivalries around the league? Well, I, I, you, you've hit a very good point. I mean, I, I think that, you know, for football fans, anytime it's Eagles, Cowboys, anytime it's, it's anybody in that division against the other, um, I do think that raises the bar a little bit. So, yeah, I, but I think because the Eagles are so unknown – with a new coach and kind of, you know, just trying to figure out what they are at quarterback and what is their identity and who are the name players. You, yeah, I see Zach Ertz's name on there, but some of these other guys are newer guys. Like you just, I know Wayne Johnson's name and, you know, and I, and I know Fletcher Cox. Like I, I know some of these guys, but like you said, they're, they're, it's a kind of a transition time right now. But I do think because the teams know each other so well, uh, it always makes for a competitive game. Listen, I, 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 whenever the Cowboys are on, they could be playing who knows who, and it's always going to take center stage. They, they just are. And do Cowboy fans care about the Eagles? Cowboy fans care about one thing, one thing. They care about the Cowboys. <laughs> and, and so that's, that, right. that, that, that's what's made, you know, Dak's return and, and uh, you know, Mike McCarthy. You know, remember, as you do, last year they, they lost Dak. They, they went on a tailspin. They started four different quarterbacks, including Dak last year. They had Andy Dalton on the team. They finished with four wins in the last five weeks. And McCarthy's way of doing stuff as he carries over from Green Bay is probably different than it was for Jason. So so McCarthy comes in here. You know, he's got a team that, that has got the swagger that they've got already. He comes in with kind of a new system. But they all kind of began to, to, to take the same size piece out of the pie late in the season, they all kind of bought in. And they all, uh, in the four and one record, reflected that. Now they carry that momentum into the offseason. Dak is back, and they've, they've had an impressive win in Los Angeles. They barely lost in Tampa. Um, I think they're, they're, they're number top five offense in pro football right now. I think they are what they seem to be, which is an improved team, second year on the system, and their starting quarterback is back. I think those are pretty powerful things. Well, uh, it all happens tonight right here on 97.3 ESPN. Kevin Harlan has the national call with Kurt Warner on Westwood One Radio. Kevin, it's always great to catch up, man. I appreciate you spending a couple minutes with us. Absolutely. Thank you. Nice to be on. We'll talk soon. Take care. Uh, That's Kevin Harlan, of course, uh, from Westwood One Radio. He's the best when it comes to uh, calling a game for me.